Hello, Coffee Time friends. How y'all doing? It's Friday night. It's fun time. We're having a wonderful hearty meal tonight. It's cowboy casserole. Y'all ever had it? We fixed it. It's good. You can change it up, mix it up, rearrange it. But I'm going to show you our version. I'm going to drink me some coffee first. Oh, that's good hot fresh coffee. It's Friday night. I can drink coffee all night if I want to. I'm going to cut up these green onions Mama got out of the garden. Mama, you ain't said a word yet. You ain't working. I'm just, I'm fixing to go over here and check this meat. Well, say hello to everybody. Be well, friendly, I, I Mama. I waved at them while you was I've talking. tried to talk into being friendly. I can't do it with it. <laughs> Quit being mean. I am friendly. Did you say one word? I waved. I got to fix this chicken. She waved. What have y'all done? Have y'all had an amazing Friday? Has it been great? Are you ready for a good weekend? you have to work this weekend? Are you just thinking it's just another night? Maybe tomorrow's your first day back to work? What's going on with y'all? I am just chopping up some green onions here. That um, These didn't come out of Mama's garden, I don't guess, did they, Mama? No, I But now guess what? She's planted some more lettuce and some more onions for a fall version. Mama, what all have you planted down there? Onions, lettuce, and mustard. Mustard greens. Curly leaf mustard greens. This was just two green onions that I got at the store. We're not putting this in the recipe. This is just decorations for the top. But you better believe it will be delicious on the top. And I'm going to put this um, little bit of bacon that Mama fried earlier today. And I'm going to do the same thing with it. I'm going to have it laying here ready to go. It says a couple of strips, a couple of slices. I'm just chopping up about two slices here. I may do one more and we'll see what it is. Just rough chopping some already fried bacon. This is going to go on the top of our cowboy casserole tonight. Now this cowboy casserole is one of those wonderful one-hit, one-pot wonders. And um, I'm not going to give you a lot of measurements tonight. Because really, it's going to depend on what dish you use. It's going to depend on how big of a dish. This is one of those recipes you do you. I'm going to give you the ingredients. I'm going to show you the technique. And then you're going to have your own um, amounts. And I'll show you what I mean as we go along. And you'll understand better. So, you, I can tell you what amounts I'm using. But that don't mean that's the amount you'll use. That's one good thing about this. You can make it as big or as small. You can do it for 50 or you can do it for 5. You can do it for 1. Um, I'm doing, this is a total of 3 pieces of bacon. I think that'll be enough. Um, we'll see here in a minute. So that's the bacon and the onions. And those are going to go on the top of our um, casserole. Mama is making, um, she's, she's browning the ground chuck over here, and we put an onion in it, and we put an equivalent of two cloves of garlic in it. And then we use minced garlic, so we put two, um, a teaspoon for each clove, I believe it is, isn't it, Mama? Yeah. says so on the jar, whatever you're supposed to do. So I'm going to read the whole recipe to you. It's cowboy casserole, one, um... One fourth cup of Parmesan cheese or cheddar or any kind of cheese you want to use. Uh, one pound of ground beef. One half of a yellow onion. Two cloves of garlic or the equivalent of by minced is fine. A uh, 10.5 ounce can of mushroom of uh, Campbell's, well, any kind, but it's cream of mushroom soup. And this is 98% fat free. Uh, so that's just because it is. We didn't do that on purpose. Uh, green beans, and I'm using um, French style green beans in the can. And uh, corn, I'm using whole kernel corn. You can use frozen if you like. And kidney beans. And these just happen to be dark red, but you could use light. Salt, pepper to taste. And then you're going to top this with tater tots. In the bag, we used a few of those, but that's what we're topping it with. Then you add the green onions and the bacon, and I'm going to add a little bit of red tomato. And this is just out of the garden. 
and I'm going to chop that up here in a minute and I'm going to add it to the um, top as well and it will cook on top there. It'll be pretty and it'll also be very tasty but if I cut it right now it'll it'll water up everywhere. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up these cans. Mama's frying like a fry cook over here. Mama, what are you frying? Put coffee in it. She put coffee and then the hamburger meat. The coffee will help tenderize. It gives it a good flour. Let's see what she's over there doing. She's not far away. She just seems like she is. She's over there grounding the chuck and grounding the onions. She's coming over here. Here's her pot of wonder there. Look at that beautiful brown well, hamburger. Up. <laughs> yeah, it's, off it's good to go, Mama. Is that good enough? That's good enough. Just pat it out level in the bottom of that skillet. So what she's going to do is she's going to pat this out and make a layer of meat and a layer of onions. It's a layer of meat and onions together. And then we're going to follow up and just the garlic. Do I need and garlic. Salt and pepper? Yes ma'am. Yes please. Salt and pepper because that's the only chance we'll get. I could sprinkle a little bit on here when I put the layers but and probably will but season that up good. Salt and pepper is the only seasoning in here unless you want to do something different. You do you. If you want to put cayenne, put a little cayenne. If you want to put some taco seasoning in, put a little taco seasoning in. You go with your play, your favorite flavor profile. That was easy for me to say. <laughs> what have y'all done this Friday? It's been a wonderful first full day of fall here. It's been 76 is as high as it got. Wonderful day. And uh, been quite enjoyable. We've not had any rain. We're not supposed to get any rain tomorrow. Um, everything is going quite nicely. Um, it's not cool like fall. And this morning when I went out, I went out early. I thought it was cooler, but it wasn't that fall cool. It was just a little cooler than normal. It was still, yeah. You couldn't see your breath, and there wasn't no mist coming up off the yard you know how it does when it's really foul and really pretty but it was nice i enjoyed it what little bit of minutes i spent out there some of y'all will ask me this is just the tupperware can up that we have it's always in the website uh, and i'll attach mama's website in the comments below the thing this is just dark kidney beans and i'm not putting all this juice in here don't worry I'm not going to do it. I'm going to open my mushroom uh, soup up. And it's got to be mixed up, pre-mixed. So you are going to have to use one bowl. Or you, well, you couldn't do it with that burger, with that hamburger in there. You're going to have to have a bowl. You've got that bowl, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. You want to set that here, and I'm just going to cook it right here. I mean, I'm just going to prepare it right here. If we get a slotted spoon right there, uh -huh. maybe, a slotted, maybe more than one, I don't know. Now I know some of you are going to say, that's a pull top, John. What are you doing? Pull tops still have sharp edges, so I try not to do that. Every once in a while you have to, or it's just, you just feel like you, that's what you're going to do. Um, but I try to think of the animals. And the people that had to fill with that. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to layer that. So this is um, the soup. This is the cream of mushroom soup. And I'm just going to... That was a sharp knife there. You're going to bake this, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't do like I did. Don't forget to preheat your oven. We're going to bake this on 400. It's, the rules say 350. I always go a little higher and, and hopefully it'll go in a little shorter time. So you want to get all your mushroom, cream of mushroom soup out of here. Any kind of cream of mushroom soup will work. If you don't like cream of mushroom, don't use it. I would use probably cream of celery. What would you use, Mama? Cream of chicken would give the other flavors. Cream of chicken would be fine, she said. So in here is our cream and mushroom soup. 
And I'm going to take this can, and this is what the directions say. Well, thank you, Mom. That's too heavy. Yeah, I could have got it. You're, you're the best one. We got brand new milk. It's a good day when you get a brand new jug of milk. Mama, you went to the grocery, didn't you? Yeah. And I'm going to put a can of milk. Um, my recipe actually says a can of milk. In parentheses, use your mushroom soup can and add milk. Are you uh, telling a story as you go along? No, Mama, this is true. That's what it says. Okay. And this is whole milk. You use any kind of milk you want. You could use uh, evaporated milk if you want to. It'd be really, really rich. And I'm just going to borrow this spoon right now. And all you want to do is just mix your milk and your creamy mushroom soup up good. And I don't think that's going to get it. it. It's getting it, but it ain't getting what I want. It ain't getting what I want. This is what I want. I want it well mixed. And over this hamburger meat here, I'm going to have to bring you all over. So you can see this skillet well. Can you all see that? <clears throat> so I'm just going to pour this soup, cream of mushroom, right over this meat and onions. Just like that. The recipe doesn't say anything about any flour or cornstarch or anything like that. Do you think we need a little mama? I don't know. I don't think we used it before, but I made a big or a batch last time. We like stuff soup. We do like thin. We like thin. So these three cans are all uh, 15.25 ounces. So onto this, I'm going to just add corn. How much? I don't know. I'm going to add to cover. I'm going to cover this with corn. Don't know how much it's going to take. I guess it depends on how much you cover. Whoops, Maggie, get that corn for me, honey. If you don't care, put it in there in the garbage can. Sure, put it in the garbage can. She got it. She's she didn't quite put it in the garbage can, though. She's a good helper. I think you got her. You think it's enough, is what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, I'm going to take that up. I don't need to use the whole thing. Do you see her pulling that right off from under me? You saw it here, folks. These are French style green beans. And I'm going to leave them just like they are. So we're just going to layer it right on top of that corn and the soup and the ground chuck and the onions. This is almost like a lasagna. Layer, layer, layer. Layer, layer, layer. <laughs> Sound like layer, layer, layer. Layer, layer, layer. Pants on fair. Okay, folks, this is one of those, I don't want to cook a thousand things tonight, we're just going to eat and we're going to fix it just like this. Uh, this is not something that you're going to have to fuss with much, and if I wasn't filming, why well, I'd have had this thrown together. That took a little over a, a half a can. Now here comes the dark kidney beans in the syrup. Did not drain them. Not doing any of that. But I'm not using the juice either. Because uh, I'm going to take this slotted spoon and it's going to bring all the, most of the juice out. Just like this. Mama, I'm going to let you get whatever cheese you want. It says Parmesan. But we can use mozzarella or that mix the style that you have in there. Whatever you want. Now this rest of these things, we're not going to waste these beans and the green beans. We're going to put this in a soup probably tomorrow or the next day. 
Um, so all this will be used. It like cowboys. That used a lot, about half of that too. the Mexican. Okay, that sounds good, Mama. Style. You want to put it on there? Now, you going to put these on top of that? Yes, ma'am. You're going to run out of room. No, ma'am. Mama has no confidence in this recipe. Do you, Mama? No, it's too much. Too much? It's the perfect amount, Mama. For that skillet, it's going to be too much. So you put a layer of cheese on top of all this. Now, Mama did put salt and pepper over there in the meat. So we don't have to worry about that. These are still frozen. These come out of the freezer. And to top it all off, now you can take your time and you can put these right around here in a row like this. If you're going to do fancy for company, that'll be fine. Maybe it'll look good. Let me see if I've got time to fool with it. My, my patients aren't usually designed for that. Most of them just designed to, let's throw them on there and get it in the oven so we can start eating. See how long it takes to do this fancier portion. Mama, you want to do this fancy portion? No, it's left up to you. It's fancy. Left up to me? Mm -hmm. This is the little bit of time consuming right there. I, really wasn't, I was going to dump them on there and spread them out good, but as I looked at it, I didn't care for the way it looked piled. And I knew Mama would judge me and You're hurt my feelings. You're not more cheese, are you? Yes, Mama. Oh, you got to put more cheese? If you cook with Mama, you have to be fast. You have to watch everything. Because <laughs> she will take your stuff. And no, I won't either. Uh, Mama, you can't deny it. You, they see you. They, they, they're right here in Mama viewing range. <laughs> they know you steal my stuff right out from under me. That's not even a secret, Mama. Okay, it looks better and it didn't take my whole life. I mean, it was just a minute or two. Any impatient people out there, raise your hand. Okay. You better raise both of yours. <laughs> Mama, you're hurting my feelings in front of my friends. Put your onions right on top of those potatoes, those tots, just like this. Let me clean up my mess because I can just scoop right on there. You can see these green onions. You could use other onions, but these sure do make a pretty presentation. Then you take your bacon and do the same thing. Now, of course, this bacon, this is not overcooked bacon because it needs to uh, crisp up on there, and it will because we're going to bake this for a few minutes. Um... There's uh -oh. the bacon. Now I'm gonna. Now I'm going to slice or quarter this tomato up, so we can add it to the top and uh, have it all purdied, looking purdy. Make sure there ain't no rotten tomato. Oh no! You talk about ruining a good thing. Put a piece of rotten tomato on there. How do you tell? Smell. It smells great. It smells great. Rotten tomato. It, it's it, you can't play hide and seek. It, if it's rotten, you're gonna know it's rotten. So I'm just going to dice this up, just like this. A rough dice, as they say, because I'm not really trying to, you know, get it all perfect. Perfect. It's just going to be a rough dice. But I'm trying not to mash every bit of the juice out of it. So if you don't think anything else that you'd like it, 
you can at least think, boy, it's pretty. Because it is quite pretty. Now, of course, like everything else we do, we tell you to do you. And there's tons of recipes for stuff just like this. One recipe I saw not long ago called this tater tot casserole. Uh, and they put tater tots on the bottom and the top. I don't, I never have done that. I start out with my meat in the skillet and that's what I stay with. Because that's what we cook first. What's the point in cooking it and taking it out and then having to put tater tots so you don't want to wash it off? But I'll, I don't want to wash it off. I just want to fix it and get it prepared. I want something good, delicious, easy for your family, and taste wonderful. Be worth the effort. And I'm sure that's what you want too. Now, I don't know how far ahead you could fix this. Don't know if you could maybe pre-bake it and then finish it when you come home. But it's not, it doesn't take that long anyway. Well, I just got my sleeve wet with something. Tomato juice, perhaps? All right. I'm going to bring y'all over here. I apologize for the movement. I try to hardly ever move y'all, but sometimes I have to. That's the way it looks, folks. And it's going in the oven. And it's going to be in there until it's nice and brown and bubbly, is what I'm going to say. And we're going to start out with the notion of 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Mama, I'll take that over there. I can get it. No, that's pretty big. Uh -huh, okay. See there? That's an iron skillet. You think I can spill it, don't you? No, I just think it's a long way to go. Are you going to put some more cheese on it? Uh, we will when we take it out. I don't want to burn it. Right. Let's set our little timer. It's on, it's on 25 minutes. So we'll see in 20 minutes. And if it needs more, we'll just dump it back in there. How's that sound? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. All of this I can take and yes, work. All this, and that's rotted tomato. Well, not rotted, it's spotted. There's a big difference between spotted and rotted. My mama taught me the tomato trick, and that's a trick you need to know for canning or anything you're doing with tomatoes. Smell it, it'll tell it. If it's rotted, you'll know it. And everybody in the room will know it, probably. Okay, so folks, we got about 20 minutes that we can uh, chat, because that's all we're cooking. Now, I'm telling you, it's been a long week. And this one dish wonder, I'm going to use that cheese on the top when we bring it out. For you people with a paper and pen, I'm going to read it one more time. And I'm not going to tell you exact amounts, I'm just going to tell you the ingredients. If you have a bigger pan than that, and there are bigger skillets than that because we have them, you may need more. You may need all, see I didn't even use all of those hush puppies and this dead some have been taken out. You may need a whole 32 ounce bag uh, with a bigger dish. You can make it uh, in anything besides an iron skillet. You can make it in another pan, um, a casserole dish, a pie dish, however thick you want to go with it. Cowboy casserole, uh, coffee time style. It is a fourth of a cup of Parmesan cheese or fresh shredded cheese out of this bag. It's a pound of ground beef, a half of a yellow onion, rough chop, just rough chop, two cloves of garlic or the equivalent thereof, and it's on the jar if you're using minced, is it, what was it, Mama, a tablespoon or a teaspoon uh, per clove? Hand it and I'll see. 10.5 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup. So I use the, use the, oh, you put grease in here. Um. Mm, it'll say on here one half teaspoon equals approximately one clove of garlic so a half a teaspoon is approximately a clove this says two cloves so a, a whole teaspoon of garlic a 10.5 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup then you take that empty can and you put your, a can of milk in it whole milk uh, or cream or two percent whatever you want to put uh, you can leave that out if you don't want the milk. 
Green beans, you can use any kind of green bean you have. You could even use home can green beans in it. We like French style uh, for stuff like this, so that's what I use. Can of whole kernel corn, or you can use frozen corn. A can of dark red kidney beans, or you can use light red kidney beans. Um, and we used approximately three-fourths of a can. This is like what's left out of the green bean can. Um, we used approximately three-fourths of a can on our size kettle. And then salt and pepper to taste, and I would add that in while I was cooking the meat and the onions. Then you top it with potato, uh, tater tots, and then chop up a green onion or two, and then add bacon. And um, and we it says here bacon orange skillet, but you don't have to. That's just what we do. So that's the recipe, folks. It's easy, it's simple, and it's all changeable and interchangeable. And every bit of it can be to your amount. If you want to put one spoonful of corn on it, one spoonful of green beans, you could make, you could literally make this in a, a little, what do they call them, the eight, number eight skillets, and have a personal size. If, you, if you've got several of those small skillets, you could stack this up and make personal skillets for two or three people in your household. I wouldn't want to fool with it with it was more than three or four people, though. Um, but it's quick, it's easy, it's simple, and it's it's good. It's filling. It's got all your, everything in it that you would use if you were going to make a little dish of everything on the table. Um, I made tater tot casserole, but always without meat. Okay, who said that? Uh, Tina, that would be easy. If you, if you don't do meat, then you can do that easy. Hi from Australia, other side of the world. Oh, wow. Debbie, you are up. Seven, what are you right now? Seven, eight, nine. You're about 9.30 in the morning. I bet you're thinking, I'm not ready for no tater tot casserole at 9.30 in the morning. Um, that's, Australia's about 14 hours ahead of us. So, you know what? Debbie, you are in the future. You're in the future. You are already on, what's the day? The 23rd. 20... 23rd so you're already in the 24th on Saturday morning here we are stuck back here in the 23rd uh, on a Friday night I love thinking about Australia time and in you know how it's so diverse it's, it's at least 14 hours I think uh, ahead of us so they like their New Year's they go into the, they've been in the New Year longer than we have and they do I, I love to watch New he Year's around the, the world. New Year's. They said they're done in the New Year and we're not. I love to know that Australia, you know, at early in the morning is already in the New Year. And then I watch it, you know, some of those programs they do it around the world. Yeah. Mama, quit swiping and wiping and sit down here and talk Give to us. Give me that bowl and I'll get it over here. Clean it up. Thank you, ma'am. Sit down here and talk to us, Mama. Hi, John and Mama from Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, you're on the same time we are, Miss Shelley, I think. Are y'all ahead of us or behind? Are you an hour different or do y'all change? We're at 7.27 p.m. So, I don't know if Ohio changes or if y'all are on our same time. Um, did I praise y'all? Hello, John and Mama from Illinois. Hey, Peggy. Now, you all are an hour off from us, I think. Love tater tot casserole. Pat, do you do it like this? Or do you do it uh, with the potatoes on the bottom and the potatoes on the top like I've seen before? What's your recipe for that? I've never made anything called tater tot casserole. But I've used tater tots in a lot of things. And, um, yes, you can use shredded hash browns if you want to on this. I have. I have made the, the cowboy casserole with shredded hash browns. I'm going to my. I'm going to make your carrot and apple salad. Oh, that is awesome! We ate that for two days, April, and wasn't a bit sorry to do it. It was delicious. Let me tell you what happened the second day, and I told Mama, I said, "I think I like this even better." My raisins reconstituted with the liquid was in there, and they were like little grapes again, and they were that raisiny. Oh, it was so good. That's nobody knocking. That's Maggie. I even was looking around. She was so steady. She does good, don't she? <laughs> Hi from 
Baytown, Texas, Bonnie. Baytown. I don't know if I've heard of that or not. Have we been to Baytown, Mama? No, not that I know of. Baked spaghetti for us in Kentucky. Charlotte, I like baked spaghetti. But if I bake it originally, uh, the first night, I use ziti instead of spaghetti. So it's baked ziti. Same kind of concept, just a different kind of noodle. But on day two of spaghetti, a lot of times we will bake it, add cheese, and it comes out more like a casserole. We like that. Hi from beautiful Oak Island, Sunday Turner. How are you? Gorgeous day today. It's been gorgeous here today, too. I look forward to those blue skies of fall every year. They are absolutely beautiful. That cobalt blue sky of fall just can't be beat. I've never made tater tot casserole that have it, but have eaten. Yes, I have, there's plenty of things I haven't made, Cheryl, that I have eaten too. Thank you for those stars, um, because you know you go to church functions and all these, you know, like if you're part of a club or a, you know anything in town, which most everybody, especially in small towns, we are. Uh, you'll find the most wonderful dishes and people usually bring their best and that's a good time to eat. Um, we go to um, functions and one woman, she always brings this wonderful slaw and it's um, made with ramen noodles and almonds and what do you know what's called, Mama? Chinese. Chinese slaw. Is it Chinese? Slaw? I don't know. It's got a dress in it. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's nothing like you KFC. You let her know that she didn't make it the last time. <laughs> Maybe, but I was nice. She made something else, and she said um, something she was. I said, well, it was delicious. And I said, but you know what's really good is your slaw. You make the best slaw. And she said, well, I'll make it next time. I said, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> she does. I've had it other places. I've tried to make it myself. Miss Joyce has got the best. It tastes just the same. No, Miss Joyce's is the best, and I love it. And I look forward to it. Hey, Pat, how are you? Fall is my favorite season. Pat, it is my... Um, I like them all, but I look forward to fall after a hot summer. And um, is it doing anything, Mama? It's in the potato, uh, tomatoes is getting a little... The, the hash browns ain't here. It's not been there long. It's just been there five minutes. Um, I look forward to fall, I guess, the best in spring. I'm tired of winter. And I'm ready for spring. I'm tired of the hot and I'm ready for the fall. So I think that's the reason I look forward to those the most. But I don't have an absolute favorite. I don't have an absolute, like, oh, I like this one the very best. It's, um, I guess if I had to line them up in order of like and dislike, it would probably be fall, spring, spring summer, yeah. winter. But I like them all. Hey, Yvonne Duncan. Thank you, for Cleve uh, Cleveland. Thank you for those stars. Uh, Y'all are so kind to send stars and stuff. Um, you don't have to. Someone asked the other night, could you not make a comment if you didn't send stars and if you wasn't subscribing? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's all free. You can comment. You can watch everything we do. We share every recipe. You don't have to pay extra to get anything. Some people choose to subscribe and some people send stars. We appreciate it. It's just like a little... Thank you to us, and we appreciate it, but it's certainly not expected, and it's certainly not required. Uh, we share all of our recipes. We don't have a place we stash them where only one or two can get them. We share everything, because what all we do is just like family, you know, and every time family comes over, they're always saying, um, what, how'd you fix this? I want the recipe. Uh, in fact, Mama keeps blank index cards in her recipe drawer, because somebody's always wanting a recipe. I mean, that's just a fact. If we take something new to church or to an event, you know, a lot of times we'll print off a little recipe thing and put it by it and people can pick them up. That's a good thing to do, too. I ain't done that in a while. Been a I'm minute. Being lazy. <laughs> well, we pretty well are with the same crews and they know our stuff. But you can put a recipe with your food. It's, it, that does two or three things. By printing off a recipe card or just on a piece of paper, print it three times and cut them, lay them there by your food. If someone's allergic to an ingredient and you've listed all your ingredients on there, including the spices, you pretty well covered that in case there is something in there they can't, they can't have. 
it also they can take one and they can share it and they, it promotes sharing in the in the group and but it also keeps some people who are a little bashful from asking some people would never ask you for a recipe uh it it gives them opportunity to collect some recipes without having to ask so it has some multiple functions there uh, that can help everybody involved and it's just a good well thank you for those stars sometimes the stars beth uh, uh, Hanlon, they come with little, see, I don't know nothing about it, but that one came with a coffee cup. Thank you, Beth. Um, they put a little message thing on there. Thank you, Debbie. How sweet. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? Hey, Deborah. Um, it's Friday night. What are y'all into? What are you going to do? What are you eating? Where are y'all from? Put a, put a comment in there. We'd like to know where you're from. Mama loves to know where y'all are from. Yeah, I like that. When you say the temperature, then I can tell oh, where you're from. And, and Mama will say, have we ever had anybody on there from this place or that Australia? So, I'm, yeah, we've had that. I've heard, I've seen that name. Sometimes there's names in Tennessee I've never heard of. And I work right. in Tennessee. And I know every county in Tennessee. But still there's places, cities and places. And I, think, I don't think I've ever heard of that. The other night, somebody posted one on here, and I had never heard of it, and that's right here from Tennessee. So There's it's, a lot that I don't know in Tennessee, because I don't work or associate with a lot of, you know. Yeah, I I deal with all of Tennessee, so I'm pretty well uh, familiar with the counties, anyway, not the cities, not the every little place or every little spot in the road. Hi from Germantown, New York. Uh... Doreen, we have been to Germantown. We ate there. It's delicious. Um, it, Germantown, New York. I remember, I think I got pork, uh, plum pork, something, medallions or something. How can you remember? I don't know, Mama. There's a world of worthless stuff up there. In New York or in your head? <laughs> in my head. <laughs> There's a world of knowledge up here that's totally useless. To <laughs> Totally unacceptable to or un, unobtainable when I need it, but yet something It'll will trigger up. it and it pops up. Um, I guess they say you've got everything you ever read or seen or done in there, just pulling it back out. That's what's happened when you get old, it's just so crowded in there and cluttered. <laughs> You have a hard time remembering. A lot of times, as you get older, you remember older things because you have long term memory, but it's short term memory, and then you don't remember what you had for breakfast, but you remember what you maybe had for breakfast the first day of high school. You know, it's funny. My uncle, Dutch, I can go right now, and here I go. This is the way I tell stories I, I start a story, then I sidetrack, then I come back. When you get a story from me, you get your money's worth because you'll probably get about five stories before I'm done. I can go to the store today and pick up something, and you ask me how much was that, and I'll have to look at the receipt. My Uncle Dutch can tell you the price of gas in 1942. He can tell you how much eggs was in 42, or he could. He could tell you any price of anything as he was growing up. He just was like that. He could tell you how much hogs sold for uh, at the market when he sold them when he got out of high school. And that had been many years. Uh, he died at, well, how was he, 70? 72. 72, 73. And he could tell you to the day he died what the price of stuff was. And I'm like, I was always amazed. Uh, we would be going to take cows to the market. And I'd say, how much are they? And he'd say, well, they're running from so much ahead to this uh, uh, a pound. He knew all about it. And he would um, say, uh, you know, that's that was that price back in the 70s. And he, it just was amazing to me. Another thing, which, you know, it wasn't always the best thing, because he could weigh you by looking at you. Uh, he could weigh a cow, and he could tell you how much it weighed. You'd get to the market. He would be very, very close. So if you was getting ready to sell cows, he could say, that cow will go 250 or that cow will go 300 you know. And he knew. And I asked him one time, I said, how do you uh, look at them and weigh them so close? Now, I don't know nothing about it, but this is what he told me. He said, you look at the cow, and you chop its legs off, 
<laughs> and you just weigh the body in your mind. He said, the legs will mess you up. He said, so when you're looking at it, you're just looking at the body and you know how much a cow's weighed before and you can judge by that. He said, don't matter how tall they are, how short they are and all that. He said, you just look at that body and you think how much it weighs. Because he could weigh people too, I'm sure. Pigs. But, pigs. And he would be so close. He has hit it right on the money before. Uh... He could just weigh something in his just by looking at it, uh, livestock anyway. So uh, it was just Best a gift gardener. here. Best gardener. It didn't matter what the season. It didn't matter how many. Like this year, we didn't have any tomatoes. Yeah. My uncle Dutch would have had tomatoes. I don't know how. Had uh, them up to Christmas. He would have that. His goal was to have fresh tomatoes on the table at Christmas. And how he done that in this climate, he would he. He wouldn't have central heat and air. He said that he would never get out of the house if he had it, and it was a waste. So he had fire, he, you know, a coal furnace, and they used just windows and fans. He would take the tomato plants in, he'd dig them up, put them in a pot, and he'd bring them in, and he'd keep them as long as he could. Then he would pick the green tomatoes off, lay them out on a table, and keep them uh, separated out. And he would always have green tomatoes, uh, or red tomatoes, on Christmas Day for Christmas lunch. And uh, that was just a talent he had. And I'd say, do you have tomatoes for lunch today? And he'd say, sure did. Did you? And I'd say, absolutely not. I ain't had them since Halloween. <laughs> but he would always have plenty. Now, Mama had, um, it's not been too many years ago. Three? Yeah. Three years ago. we the last had, two years we've not had. Well, we, last year was better than this year. This is the worst year we've had. This ever. worst year ever. This is the worst year ever. We've not got a bushel of tomatoes. Uh, we've not had probably a peck of tomatoes. Um, one year we had them on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Mama yeah. had red tomatoes on Thanksgiving table, and they were delicious. And um, But she had plenty that year. Uh, most of the time, to be honest with you, even as much as I love them, as much as I love tomatoes, I get tired of looking at them after a while because they're on the kitchen table over here. They're on the island here. Uh, she'll put them in the sunroom. I'm like, Mama, we got tomatoes everywhere. I know, they're everywhere. We've got tomatoes everywhere. And every day or two or three, Mama will go through every tomato in the house, get all the ones exact one little spot, any little thing, cut them off, and count them. And she might count a quart. She might count three quarts. Uh, she might count six quarts. And that's the whole season. And uh, I always look forward to that because... As you canners know, sometimes you just get how much, like a half a can of, a half a jar of tomatoes. Guess who got to eat those at the end of the day? That'd be me. She'd say, I've got a half a jar in there. And I'd say, oh, I want, and we've not canned a one this year. Not a one. No. Um, I don't know that we could do anything different. We watered the garden. One of y'all sent us even a soaker hose so you could just turn it on and let it water slowly. We watered during the dry times in, um. There was just a blight or something this year. Yeah. I blame, I don't know what I blame, but I think sometimes uh, the seed quality of the plants are not the same. Some of my plants look real good and bloomed. I don't know. And my uh, cucumbers bloom forever before they ever set on a cucumber. And I've had other people say the same thing. You know, I had plenty of vines. I had beautiful plants. had no fruit um i had plenty of blooms had no fruit or i had fruit but it wasn't the same uh someone asked us about y'all like fried squash we didn't have enough to fry uh, we, we fried cut up some in okra or something we chopped it up but i mean i'm talking about just frying it uh we had something to put on salad i like to eat it raw on salad so what are y'all eating tonight happy birthday kathy rom who are you talking to Kathy's got a birthday person. Whoever you are, happy birthday to you. Why is your face so red, John? Well, I got a little overambitious today and got out in the sun for a few minutes. It don't take long for me. Um, the reason I always cover up as much as I can. Uh, but if I get out in the sun, it kind of blisters me. It don't hurt. It ain't like a real sunburn, and tomorrow it'll be gone. But if I'm out in the sun, you'll know, even in a car, if I'd ride in, if I ride in the sun, even not with the sunroof open, uh, just coming through the glass, I get this 
red. So, happy birthday, Judy. Judy's got a birthday, but who y'all talking to? Somebody tell me whose birthday it is. Hey, Samantha. Oh, we're in the last year of the seventh year cycle. Oh, Wanda, okay. So, we'll have a new cycle next year. So we'll it'll have... be better. All right, Wanda, thank you. In case you don't know what Wanda's talking about, every seven years is a cycle. Uh, in the That's the way we think of it, too. And, you know, even your body changes every seven years. So in seven years' time, your a human cell, this little science, a human cell's life is around seven years. So it it stands to reason every seven years your whole body has replenished. Um, I know you still have the same scars and the same freckles. I don't know how that works, but that's the science behind it. So um, what's it doing, Mama? We'll be talking about that after we're, after a while. You let that bowl over, should say. It's like two minutes. Let's let it go the whole 25 and see what we got. And I'll come over there and get it. Don't. I'm not going to try to lift it. It's no, no, no. Cool. No, no. Um, but we will see what uh, it is in just about. Well, one little, two little spots ain't much, Mama. No, but zero spots is even better. All right, have a seat. We'll see what it does. We'll need to clean it anyway. Well, yeah, it needs a good cleaning, Mama. Uh, we had homemade lasagna. Oh, that's Mama makes wonderful lasagna, Jeannie. We love lasagna here. Hello, Janet. How are you? Hello, Miss Linda. Did anybody tell me? It's probably told me 12 times, and I didn't see it. anybody's birthday. Whoever birthday it is, happy birthday. Happy birthday to anybody who's had a birthday. Enjoy the whole week. I had one back in August. <laughs> Mama, we've, we've done your month. Mama gets a birthday month. Happy birthday, Wanda says. Wanda, who's it for? And Faust, Faust is watching. Hello, Miss Ann. Happy birthday. Judy. Uh, Terry replied, happy, well, happy birthday, Judy. If it is your birthday, thank you for the stars, Kathy. Kathy with the C. Happy birthday, Kathy. The Hayden says. So these people are saying happy birthday, so I don't know who they're talking to. From Mobile, Alabama, Miss Jeanette, we've been to Mobile. We used to go through Mobile all the time. I bought an Easy Bake, um, somebody bought an Easy Bake oven. You have to call me back. I'm, we're in the middle of cooking right now. <laughs> um, happy birthday. It's, it's my birthday too. Well, Terry, happy birthday. Yeah. Terry Crow, happy birthday. Send some hearts up for Terry and whoever else had a birthday on here. Happy birthday to all, Leah. See, that Leah and I are covering everybody at the same what time. Is it? Pamela has a birthday. Well, happy birthday, Pamela. Ruth is a chicken and rice with broccoli. Uh, uh, granddaughter. Ooh, Kathleen, that's good. She had a birthday every time in church when they asked for birthday. Shouldn't she raise her hand? Yeah, one little girl at church. We do birthdays every Sunday at church. And one little girl raised her hand. Well, several of them have in the past, but one in particular raised her hand. She said... I have a birthday in the summer. <laughs> so she was just, we never did get really when it was, but she was letting she me. She loved to say. From it. Florida. Well, hello. Love you all. Your very oven has ran out. All right. Let me get it and bring it right over here. And we will dip in it. Or I don't think we're going to be able to cut it unless we let it no, cut. No, it's good. It ain't cuttable. It's juicy. Yeah, it's not cuttable. It's dippable. Mama, there's barely two spots in here, not even the size of a nickel. As soon as it cools down, I will clean it out. Oh, my word. You know, you make stuff, and then you forget how delicious it is and how beautiful it looks until you make it again, and then you're like, turn it out. why don't we make that more often? Why don't we fix that every night? Oh, yeah. I'm going to sprinkle a little more cheese on here. Just a little more. Let's let you all look. Look how beautiful. It did bubble out a little. Well, I thought it was a wee bit blue. But see how those tomatoes did? It did not hurt them. They're just good and cooked on there. We love warm tomatoes. 
If you don't, put them on right now. They'll still be maybe a little warm, but they won't uh, be browned and cooked. But that's my favorite part. I love it on pizza. I love it cooked tomatoes, just cooked. We like to just fry them sometime red, put different toppings on them with a little bit of cheese. We are going to let that cool just a minute, folks. We're not going to keep you on here all night, but I'm going to let that cool. You want to, uh, I'm going to let that cool just a minute, but look how pretty. Look how good. In one dish wonder, mm-mm-mm. A one dish wonder you can't beat. Hello from Pennsylvania, Livingtown, Pennsylvania. I'm so popular tonight. That looks delicious, Shirley. We're going to find out. Uh, and we're going to see how delicious it is. Hello, Wanda. How are you, Kathy? Wow, isn't it beautiful, Kathy? Uh, your video is frozen. Probably the phone rang. That's mm -hmm. what. When the phone rings, it kind of. Stop stops it. the motion but it used to cut us off so thank you facebook for making that improvement looks so good it does kathy it's not cool much mom are you ready to attempt it i don't know about trying to get it out of there i'm gonna try it i ain't scared you ain't scared of nothing are you mm -mm, i really ain't i pray <laughs> the lord will protect me or take me one protect me or take me i don't know which it'll be but It'll be all right in the end. All right, let's get us a napkin. Okay. Mama, I'm going to make you, I mean, I'm going to let you go first. Just a little bit. Like, they, we all said that together. We knew what she was going to say. Just, this is really moist. That's a lot. I don't think it needed a whole can of milk. Well, I, that's what I pour, normally put. But you could have put a little flour. It's not It's not going to be this moist when it cools. When it cools. That's what you're going to say. If you can That's make it, let it. Enough. That's good enough, she says. Look at that. That'll take forever to cool off. Oh, yeah. Mama, it won't take that long. It smells good. You could put a tablespoon of flour in it in your, in your soup mix, but that soup will thicken itself. It cools down some anyway. Yeah, and tomorrow you'll be adding liquid to liquefy it a little bit. All right. There it is, folks. Absolutely going to be delicious, I'm sure. Let's uh, bless it, Mama, and then you get to taste it. Oh, boy. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to take this meal tonight, dear Lord. We just thank you for allowing us to be together, Lord. And dear, dear Lord, we just pray for our families and pray for all the families that are watching. And dear Lord, be with each and every prayer request that's out there. Dear Lord, we know it's your plan, your answers, and in your time. And dear Lord, we just ask you to put a hedge protection on each and every one. Watch over our country, watch over our nation, watch over our world, dear Lord, and be with us in everything we do. Lead and guide and direct us. In your name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, Mama. I want y'all look how pretty that is. Now, see, it'd be hard to pack, but it would be good to. If you had a different container with a lid on it. You could take that for a church dinner or something. I was taking it somewhere. So I'd fix it in a glass casserole. I would fix it in a casserole dish. That's the reason I said you can put anything you want to. Mm -hmm. um, but the iron skillet is a good way to prepare it at home. Mm -hmm. All right, Mama. What's the verdict? It's very good. It's very good, she said. Mm -hmm. Not just, yeah, it's okay. Or, kinda, you'll like it. Kind of makes you think of, a, well, it don't really taste like a chicken pot pie with the beef in it, but it's the texture and flavor of it. So. It hey. sure is good. It sure is good. Let me show y'all. It's, she said chicken pot pie. It would taste like a beef pot pie. Yeah. You got all the good hearty vegetables in there. That mushroom soup, it don't taste like mushrooms. Mama don't care for mushrooms. But it just gives it a good flavor. And a little bit of tater tots on top, that give them a good flavor too. So, you got potatoes and corn, green beans, kidney beans, and um, 
meat and onions. You got all that you would fix for a big meal, mushrooms. except now you just have one dish to do Milk with. Milk and mushrooms. N milk and soup, so. It's delicious, y'all. Mm-mm-mm. Would you give it a fix again? Yeah. I sure would. Mm-hmm. Be good on a cold winter night. It's a warm feeling. And now that you said that, Mama, we made this one time with chicken and put tater tots on it. So you could use it with chicken easily. Yeah. Um, We made... Something similar this one time too, and put biscuits on top too with chicken. Mmm. How could you miss that big mouth? I miss mine all the time. It's easy. <laughs> well, Mama, I'm gonna give this a a nine out of ten stars. If it was just a little less soupy, but we didn't give it a chance to set. I mean, it was literally bubbling when I set it down. As you can see, it's already thickening back up. So by the time this sets a minute, that will be thicker like soup. Like the soup. But if you want to, if you're worried about that, I was kind of wondering when I put it in there, seeing how loose it was. Put you a little bit of cornstarch in and stir it in there with that. Or put you just a little bit of flour. Mm -hmm. Cornstarch would be better because it wouldn't clump. And it would be cold, so that would be fine. So. And I like the French style beans better than the regular. Yes, the French style is just on. delicious in it. I don't like all them beans in it. Like. No. If we did be green beans in a casserole, <laughs> we normally use French style. Because there, there's no beans in it, it's just the green bean, the bean part, and it's delicious. All right, folks, I'm going to say, fix this. You'll like it. Your family will like it, too. And whoever does the dishes will really like it, because you've got that one pan and that one mixing bowl that I use to wash. A couple of knives and a minimal. We'll just go with minimal. Yeah. Folks, that's all we got. We're going to let y'all go. Enjoy your night. It's already 8 o'clock nearly. Be blessed. Enjoy your evening. You got another hour, two, three before you have to go to bed. Make some memories Why of your you family. Why about three? <laughs> Mama, they stay up to all hours. I, I bet do you. I too. I'll be watching television. I'll bet you some of these people on here will be up at 10.30, won't you? <laughs> um, I'm on a Friday night, even I might sit up till 9.45. Oh, wow. Um, but I'll be up early in the morning. So I may go on back to sleep. I mean, I might go to sleep early. We've got a busy day tomorrow. Yep. Our church is having an event tomorrow for the community. And uh, we'll be participating in that for a little while. We'll have to come back and check on Maggie in between. Uh, her sitter may come and sit with her. Usually does. They worry about her just like we do. Y'all have a great night. Be blessed and have a blessed tomorrow. Wake up in the morning. Maybe you'll get some more of that cool morning breeze in the morning. And you can enjoy a cup of coffee on your porch or tea or just a Coca-Cola. Just enjoy. That's the point. Say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. And God bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye y'all. Have a good one.